fucking pancake. Huh? <laughs> Animal, what are you doing? <laughs> Yo. Are you drunk? My How stomach you? hurts from that pancake. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe your stomach hurts from the coronavirus. Are we? <sighs> are we what? Are we doing this? I keep trying to start, and then you start making noises. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't take animal seriously right now. <laughs> I feel like he's about to shit himself alive <laughs> on air. Let's, come on, let's get through this. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Grow up. Grow up. It's time to grow up because it's a faith of public podcast, baby. Welcome, <laughs> bike to the headquarters. Welcome, bike. If you are still quarantined like everybody in the world is, I don't know why I started it off if, like that. If. if there's still some crazy fucking people out there, right, man? I see the, the parks in Brooklyn are popping off. Domino Parks got more people at it now than it did during <laughs> the fucking summer when I used to go. It was ridiculous. No fucks Th- given. Today's episode of Fade the Public, today's featured film, we're going to look at player props. That were set by FanDuel. So we're going to take a look at some quarterbacks, some wide receivers, some running backs, some tight ends. What FanDuel has set up for them statistically, rushing yards, receiving touchdowns, passing yards, things like that. And what we did was we found some player props that one of us liked the over, one of us liked the under, one of us was indifferent about, and we're going to fucking have a a, a SummerSlam right now. We are going to battle against each other. Whoever's the indifferent one. That was cool. Is going to be it like fucked up the camera do that again it like under focus it got you dark real quick okay enough of that oh you okay my back <laughs> why you why did you touch your chest because it goes through jolts okay. all the way through it's like a bullet you thought it would yeah just, it would fix your back if you touch your chest all right uh so we're gonna pretend like the indifferent person basically has got a thousand dollars cash i know animals broke ass doesn't have that but we're gonna pretend that he has a thousand dollars cash and he wants to lay it on the line for one of these player props. Myself and Snacks, or myself and Animal, or Animal and Snacks are going to argue against each other. Whoever comes out victorious with the best argument on the over-under player props will get a point, I guess. I don't know what we're playing for. It's probably just a pride thing at this point. Yeah. Um, and we, uh, and that, that's all we got today for you. So how, how we doing, boys? Um, yeah, doing, doing good. I haven't. I don't. I haven't officially lost my mind yet. I'm actually starting to get normalized by being home 24 seven, and it's starting to scare me. So, not not good. Animal, how's your stomach? I I told you guys before. I feel like I'm thriving. So I mean, <laughs> well, well, you've we'll, been doing this for a year. We'll yeah, let you know I'm that you, that I mean, you're not. I'm I'm just living life. I'm eating pancakes. I'm eating I'm eating big cookies. Have you eaten anything that doesn't resemble a giant pancake or cookie? Like, do you only just like bacon? Circle bacon? objects. What? I mean, a lot of big circle objects. Yeah, a lot of UFO shaped things. Anything besides yeah. that? No. Uh, oh, just, you know, pizza. So that's another big circle that's object. another UFO <laughs> object. <laughs> you fucking asshole. All that's right. It. All right. All right. All right, all right, all right. Hey, can we get rid of the Drew Brees one? I don't want to do that one anymore. Scott, hit the intro. (laughs) Max, what is wrong with you today? I I was looking. His last two seasons, he was really bad. (laughs) I thought that number was low for him, but I mean... Shouldn't that have been involved in your fucking prep work? Well, I didn't do all my prep work for every single one because I didn't know what we were doing. Asshole. You know, you just see Drew Brees in 4,049 yards. You figure it's, you know, low. Yeah, you also see him being like 45 years old and not really playing that well, so. Yeah, we'll circle back to that one. Okay. What's cracking big dogs? (laughs) I figure out what's wrong with animal. I don't know what's going on here. There's no giant pinpoint. I think he smoked some dope before this. Mm-mm. I think he did too. That's the only explanation because he's not normally this weird or this like unenthused or this just uh. animal. No, fess up. Cooking. Don't lie to the big dogs. I was just making a pancake. What's wrong with you? Did you Nothing. put some I'm, weed I'm in right, the pancake? I'm, 
I'm pumped. I have a lot of energy. I'm excited about a lot of the things that we got going on behind the scenes. So I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm happy. Nah, something's off. Something's wrong. Let's go steal his money. All right, first player prop on the board. We have Daniel Jones set at 3,799.5 passing yards. 3,800 passing yards for Daniel Jones. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a second to take a wild fucking guess. Which of these two, I will be the judge for this first one. Which of these two have the under? Which of these, which of these two has the over? You think that's enough time for them to guess? Yeah, they could have guessed about 250 times within that pause frame. Snack, 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 snack. Snacks versus animal. Y'all ready to rumble? I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Animal. Who animal? wants to make their case first? Why don't you try animal? See what you can okay. do. Here's my case, and I am – it's simple math. I'm not a math guy, but this math is worked out. I figured it out. Last season, Daniel Jones – 232 yards a game times 16 games that's 3,712 yards that is less than 3,799 and a half yards that is why I am taking the under can I ask you something no no, no. I'll wait till the end I'll write my notes down and then I'll ask you guys at the end also I'm not going to just say like oh you know just because last year not everything carries over but one thing that is a big deal is Saquon was hurt last year they probably threw the ball a little more than normal. Saquon is not hurt this year. They're going to run the ball a lot more with Saquon and try and help Dan get a rhythm going. Name is Daniel. In his second season. Okay. My turn? Mm-hmm. Usually that's what happens when the, uh, the opposing team loses their argument right away. Um, so, yeah, he, he threw for 3,000 yards last year, 3,073, and he played 12 games. Um, I think if he plays four more, he gets over that threshold. And yes, Saquon was hurt, but yes, they threw the ball a lot because their defense is so bad and they were losing 14, nothing before they could blink an eye. They had to throw the ball. What there is nothing. They may have improved the defense just a little bit, but they're still going to be throwing the football a lot. And if anything, that offensive line can do, they can't run block. I can tell you that maybe moderately pass block. Daniel Jones is the future. He's going to take a step forward in his second year. He's going to throw over his yards prop bet. And I think as Max would say, it's, it's simple. All right. Well, I'll, 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 over. Begin, I'll begin the counter arguments by saying neither were particularly strong <laughs> whatsoever. I would put my, I would rather put my hundred on the zero of roulette than either of the analysis that both you gave. First off, animal broke down the passing yardage divided by 13 games. His passing yardage total included week one where he passed the ball four times and was just in the game for the end of the game. And that is divided into the 13 games. So if you take that out and his per game numbers are now calculated based on 12 games, he is in fact over the game. So if you are going with simple math, you would, sir, in fact, be incorrect. Now I'm going to be like Tony Reale over here. Hold on. Can uh, I just say one thing? I did say before this, math is not – Something that I'm good at. That's not math. That's lack of research, sir. So for that reason, I will be going with the over and I will be going with snacks. Ding, motherfucking ding. <clears throat> I'm used to it. It's okay. It's, you shouldn't. I'm not bullying well, you. Well, you made a I'm really just, bad argument. No, I, I, that's what I said. It's fine. It's okay. No big deal. Guess what? We've got a duel between you two again. Bike to bike, animal versus snacks. This time, the script has flipped. Drew Brees, passing yardage, 4049.5. Four, I'm having trouble saying this. This is a tough fucking over-under to say. 4,049 and a half passing yards. Snacks takes the under for Drew Brees. Animal takes the over. Animal said he's really, really confident about this one. So we'll let Snacks uh, argue first because Animal went first last time. And then Animal can hit him with a little rebuttal, rebuttal action. Let's hit that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you've been watching the same Drew Brees, but he's not the guy that he once was. He did miss, what, five games last year, and he was under 3,000 yards. That doesn't happen. But the year before, he was under 4,002, and he played a full full health of, of games. Um, I just don't see the Drew Brees 
that we're accustomed to seeing from five years ago where he's throwing 5,000 yards. I think that number is pretty accurate. I think he's just under 4,000. He's got Michael Thomas. They added Emmanuel Sanders. But I think they're going to get Kamara more involved in that running game. Tavius Murray, they're going to have a big running game year because they, they have to mask that noodle arm that is becoming Drew Brees. And he can't really stay healthy. We saw him miss five games last year. Correct. Incorrect. That's correct. Who's to say he's not going to miss three this year, two this year? Not banking on an over and a big year from Drew Brees and age 47. Okay. Mr. Animal. That's, uh, that's fair. Uh, yeah, I am super confident about this one. Not really. But here's the thing. I, I agree with what you said about, you know, the year before, 2018, when he still didn't reach that 4,000 mark and he played a full season, but he played only 15 games. If he did play that full 16, he definitely would have went over that mark. He was only 58 yards shy or whatever it was. So do I think Drew Brees is going to be sitting out games that possibly the last – season of his career this is his his swan song this is it this is everything so do i think he's gonna be sitting out games no is he gonna get hurt no he's gonna be an iron man this year he's going to throw for over four thousand and forty nine and a half yards because he's literally uh, you know last year he got hurt whatever year before that he didn't play the last game he hasn't thrown under four thousand yards since 2005 since 2005 so, I mean, erase the last two seasons. Those don't count. They don't help my argument. That, see, that, that's, the most, that's the most ridiculous thing you could possibly say. He's a year older, and he's shown the last two years he's not getting there, and he's staying off the field more. Why don't yeah, you start adding things up? When you get older, your body starts This is his last there. season. He's not going to stay off the field. Oh he's going to be on the field for every snap because he wants to go it's out. His last, Eli's last season was last year. Don't you think he wanted to stay on the field? <laughs> Yeah, but you can't compare Eli to Drew Brees. I'm sorry. Why? It's not, they're not, they're not the same they don't know as one. Not in the same places in their careers at the same age. It's not You're right. Same. Eli was better. Have all but, arguments been made? Yeah. Yeah, I think Max is an idiot. That's my last point. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. in my opinion, the majority of Snacks' analysis lends itself to the fact that Drew Brees just simply doesn't have the arm that he used to, which Check I would – which I would agree with. However, the statistical analysis was, as Max pointed out, as Mr. Animal pointed out, it would have been over the 4,000-yard mark had he played the 16 games in 2018. He only missed one game. So to say that he keeps missing games, I think is um, quite irresponsible of Mr. Snacks because he did miss five games this year, missed five games this year, but the previous 15 years combined, he missed three total games. 15, 10, and 12, He wasn't 15. 42 years old the previous 15 He's a 16-game guy. He plays every game no matter what. Yeah, well, every, once, every five years, years, every five years, he'll miss one game. That's about it. And so I don't look at Drew Brees. I wouldn't bet on the fact that Drew Brees is going to miss games just for the fact that he missed games this year. He seems to be healthy and coming into this year. Yes, he is older, so he's always going to be at a little bit of a higher injury risk. We have seen the pass attempts – flutter over the last three years right whereas you know animal makes the point that he's over always over 4,000 yards but they are not running the same offense that they had been previously with Drew Brees right where he was up at the 650 to 670 pass attempt mark. also something I want to point out Alvin Kamara was hurt last season a big part of their pass game he had about 300 or so less receiving yards than normal yes that is a good point uh, which also means that he would be running the ball a little bit more Snacks also makes a point that they're going to be a, a, a more run-centric team with Latavius Murray, which I probably disagree with. I think they have to draft a, a wide receiver high in the draft, and this is just my opinion here. I think they have to draft a wide receiver high in the draft because they've not been able to get anyone that sides with Michael – or can play opposite of Michael Thomas. They've tried with Ted Ginn. They've tried with Trey Quan Smith. It hasn't worked. So for that reason, I think they bring in a nice rookie. Yes, Snacks, you want to jump in? And they just signed Emmanuel Sanders. I think he, he's a good oh, placeholder right. for a year. You're yeah, right. You're right. Emmanuel right. Sanders. And, I still... and like that was, that was one of my first things. Yes, he, he gets a new weapon. But just based on the eye test, and he played fine down the stretch, I just don't see that same Drew Brees. And I don't know if that holds up. So if I'm betting the $1,000 that I have on an over-under, I'm, I'm going to go under. And it's not confidently because Drew Brees is a stud. That's but a short I, ball offense, though. Everything's 10-yard slants, 15-yard slants. So it like, is. He, he, he's, not required, he's not required to have that arm. What I will say, though, for the, for the general people out there, the majority of people take the over. The majority of sports bettors in general take the over because they like the excitement and they just see something like, oh, over, over, over. But the house wins because the majority of things hit on the under. Anytime a player misses multiple games, that basically puts him without – 
anything close to that total. They basically put the total projecting as if the player is going to play 16 games. So yes. any missed injury, one game is basically going to put them at the under. So that's why Vegas wins on a lot. People just like to get excited about things going over. That being said, I don't see Drew Brees as a higher risk injury player this year. Emmanuel Sanders, probably a rookie. Alvin Kamara back in the passing game. Animal, take my money. One point for Mr. Animal. Ding, ding, I can't ding, believe ding, you just ding, started with a mush. Ding, 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 ding. Snacks, why don't you uh, judge this next one? Oh, wow. That's right. We do have a good one. And honestly, one I am very intrigued about, which goes, Mr. Tom Brady, he's, uh, did you guys hear? He's not on the Patriots anymore? I have heard. You've heard. Mm-hmm. So he is on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who just released new uniforms. Pretty, pretty cool, actually. Not bad. Uh, I haven't seen his them. touchdown. Yeah, they're not. They're, not they're basically the old ones. Yeah, the all white ones are nice. Were better. Like yeah, the right. Exactly. So they're pretty cool. Every other New Jersey that comes out is terrible. But Mr. Tom Brady of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, his passing total touchdowns is at twenty nine and a half for the year. Um, it looks like Mr. Mr. Animal has the under, and Mr. Nick has the over. Um, I am on the fence, so I would like to hear from both of you. Mr. Nick, please tell me why Thomas Brady is going to go over 29 and a half touchdowns. Uh, I I really think it comes down to the fact that he's moving to a a far more potent offense. I mean, the norm for Brady, let's be honest here. The norm for Brady in the previous years has always been 29 minimum on an off year. He'll hit 29. And that's only when he has really shitty weapons. I'm of the camp willing to put last year. Yes, you might say, you know, he's, he's a little bit of a Drew Brees-esque uh, outlook for this year in that you might not see it from him on the eye test anymore. But he's still Brady. He's still smart as fuck. And now you get to pair him with a guy like Bruce Arians who throws the ball at an incredibly high rate. If we look at the pass attempts last year for a team like Tampa Bay, Jameis Winston, you have any idea how many – I, w- I would like to ask you guys, how many quarterbacks attempted more passes than Jameis Winston last year? Who? How many quarterbacks attempted more passes in the NFL than Jameis Winston last year? I, I said two. Oh, I thought you said who. Uh, I'm probably going to say nobody. There was not a single quarterback that attempted more passes than Jameis Winston last year. Yes, I know he's got the interception problem. But this is where I think – it leans more towards Brady scoring touchdowns, which I'm a little hesitant to go with the yardage. I don't know if the yardage is going to be there, but this offense is going to be much more efficient. I think they get into the scoring zone a lot more. And what we saw last year was that New England ran the ball a lot more when they're on the goal line. They ran the ball inside the 10 a lot more, and I don't have the numbers exactly right up here, but I know Sonny Michel was – Sonny Michel ran the ball on the goal line 12 times last year. Uh, Peyton Barber – ran the ball on the goal line eight times last year, and he was their highest guy. I think now with Peyton Barber out of there, they don't have a true thick back with Tom Brady in there. They're going to be looking to utilize the red zone more for a passing attack. They have guys like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, OJ Howard. They have a really, really, really fucking stacked passing core. And what I think that the the discussion this offseason with like which Tampa Bay player do I pick, my heart always goes to when you have that problem, take the quarterback because it's a good fucking problem to have. They're going to be an efficient offense. They have fantastic weapons. Brady had 24 touchdowns last season. They were trying to run the ball more. Their defense was shutting guys down and giving them, you know, good field position, whatever. I just, I just think there's going to be a very potent offense. I think this is the best weapons that Brady might have ever had in his career. So I don't see him going under 29 touchdowns this year. It's very well put, Mr. Animal. That's fair. That's fair. Here's um. My argument is kind of similar to what Snacks said earlier with the, and what you were mentioning about with the Drew Brees effect almost where, you know, we're dealing with an older quarterback here. But my biggest thing is we're dealing with an older quarterback who's played in one system his entire career. One system. That was it. He was with the Patriots his whole entire career playing the same way in the same system, check down, screen passes. And Bruce Arians likes to throw deep. Now, I know he's going to have to play to his quarterback strengths, but will he? is the question. I'm just still very curious as to whether this whole Tom Brady going to a new team experiment is even going to work. Last year, he said he had 24 touchdowns. 2018, he had 29 touchdowns. 2017, he had 32. Then he goes back to 28 and 16. Like He's always floating around that mark, and that's in a system that he's been comfortable in his entire career. So 
The Patriots, all they do is line up and run it on the one yard line. They don't don't discount Tom Brady's QB sneaks on the one yard line either. Goal yeah, line rushes, those, man. Those don't count. Those are passing touchdowns. I know. I'm saying that's what they did in New England, but uh, they never, you know they did that heavy. They were running they the ball from the ten yard rate. in. Yeah, yeah I, I, listen, I get the argument for the new weapons. I just still, I'm, I'm still not confident that Tom Brady is the answer in Tampa Bay. I don't think that you're going to see that much of a, a difference production from the wide receivers because, like you said, Jameis Winston threw the ball the most in the entire league last year. Now, will they do that with Tom Brady? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't, I don't see this whole. I just don't see the 29 and a half touchdowns. I see 25 touchdowns for Tom Brady this year. 25. I just do you think the Tampa Bay offense is going to be good? Yeah, I'm sure it will be. But you know, we're talking about also an entire new offensive line. There's just so many new things for Tom Brady that so late in his career, I just don't see him staying at the same level or improving because he's going to have to either play at the same exact level he's been playing at while he was on the Patriots his entire career or improve from the last couple of seasons. And I don't see him doing that. I, I can I can I could see the argument and the fact that you know we talk about how wide receivers switching teams always gets you a little bit hesitant to draft them to inc- you know acclimate themselves into the <laughs> offense with Tom Brady that's why I'm like I I don't know if this is going to be the most efficient offense which is what makes me pull back from the yardage but I think like I think they're going to be a high scoring team I don't know if they're going to get it all done through long passes and shit but I think using Brady and him having uh, him being so smart and him being in the close quarters of the scoring zone tells me that Arians is going to trust him. I mean, look what he did with Carson Palmer at the end of his career too. Mm-hmm. He's going to trust him Damn it. near near the ten yard line in the twenty yard line because he doesn't need Brady to throw the ball forty yards down the field when you're seven yards out. So I, I like the touchdown. I don't I don't know if I like the yardage, but I, I do think Brady just chucks a bunch of uh, scores in there. Not to mention that they're going to be going against Carolina, who lost everybody on their defense. The Falcons' defense is fucking miserable. The Saints are have been good over the last three or four years, but. But Brady's got, you know, uh, AFC South-esque matchups again, if not worse, to be honest with you, in the secondary. Well, I will. I'm judge, jury, and execution right now. Nick, literally the last two points you made about Arians, what he did with Palmer at the end of his career, and the division that he plays in were going to be two sticking points I was going to make. And I will say, Mac, you do make good points. He's really – he teeters right around that 29 um, benchmark for touchdowns. And – in a very questionable offseason in a new system, when is he? When are they going to get on the practice field? And when is yeah, he going to be able to gel? That's something that I didn't get to bring up. Like they're not practicing right now. They don't have training camps and stuff. Like who knows when they're going to be able to get that that rapport with each other? Like Brady needs to throw to God, but he needs to throw to Evans. Like he's been throwing Edelman right. for years. It's a good. It's for a good sure. point. I think. I think the majority of Vegas bets need to be unders this year. I would think so too. Because right now, right now is probably the, the biggest time to exploit those. Because and also, just like to point out, Carson Palmer, practices. his his years in Arizona, he threw 24 touchdowns, 11 touchdowns, he was hurt. 35 was the most, and then 26 and 9. So, I mean, like, yeah, he, Carson Palmer did well, but he still didn't barely even went over 29. He did it one year. Car- Carson Palmer's also not it wasn't Tom his Brady. first year. Well, yeah, still, yeah. Palmer Palmer's was, was never the player that Brady was. No, it was his first year, though. Was oh, second. sweet Jesus. Oh, boy. Um, what did he say? I have no idea. Um, you keep eating pancakes. We'll keep making points over here, animal. That's 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 scary, animal, and I, I I feel bad for you. I am going over. I Brady has not played, and Max, it's not because I don't want you to get the point because you really you were you're very close to selling me. But Brady has not played with these kind of weapons ever. Godwin and okay. Evans are easily the best duo wide receiver on on any any team, and they're just happen to be like two top seven wide receivers in the game. Cameron Bray and O.J. Howard, those guys could play the tight end position. I think they beef up the offensive line in the draft to further protect Brady, and I think he goes out slinging it. I really does. It's his first year away from Belichick, away from the Patriots. He's going to want to show something. He's going to want to prove something to everybody. He's going to go out slinging it over 29 and a half touchdowns. Nick, take the point. Ding, 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 motherfucker. Snacks, you're back up as judge, as judge, jury, and oh, executioner. Oh, my God, this is so exciting. I feel so bad. But how many of those touchdowns went to running backs like James White? <laughs> Dude, they have fucking Rojo. Don't worry about it. Well, yeah, that's they're that's gonna draft thing. the pass catching back too. Bruce Arians already came out and said that. Am, shit. I, the, am I the judge? No, no. Snacks, Snacks is the game. Snacks is the judge. And with that, animal, you're go. just too much of a dege- degenerate. You like to gamble. <laughs> yeah, why am I? Yeah, yeah. You're not <laughs> indifferent on any fucking lines. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're only good for fucking for game shows. That's it. Now, <laughs> now you have to argue. Now you have to argue. But the next player we have, uh, we're moving away from the quarterbacks and we're going to 
wide receivers and one Devontae Adams, who uh, had a slower year than normal last year due to um, you guys can get into that. His receiving yards are set at 1,174 and a half. Mr. Nick, you have the over on that total and Animal, you have the under. I am very curious about Devontae Adams as he is one of my favorite receivers and I, I do think he is in line for a bounce back, but I am very curious to hear as to why Animal, you think they, that he is going under his total. I got to go first? Well, yeah, I said you. Great segue, Animal. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, Devonta Adams under 1,174 and a half yards. He's only went over 1,000 yards once in his entire career. He only did it in 2018 where he had that great year with uh, Aaron Rodgers where he caught 111 balls. Since then, I mean, even before then, he had 74 receptions, 75 receptions, like 83 receptions last year. Yeah, he was hurt. He only had 997 yards last season. 1,137 is... Definitely an attainable number, but not anymore. I think years ago it would have been, but not anymore with the way the Packers offense runs nowadays. It is a run-first offense. They run the ball. You saw uh, Aaron Jones. In 2018, he only had 25 receptions or 24 receptions. He doubled his receptions. So you just know that they're throwing the ball to the running backs more. And Geronimo Allison and Marquez Valdez-Scanling were absolute trash shit last season. They were completely useless. It was Alan Lazard was the wide receiver two, I believe. And I don't even think he was really a serviceable wide receiver two in that offense. So they're either going to draft somebody to help Rodgers or they're going to, oh, they're probably going to have to draft someone, to be honest with you. That's what they're going to do. So you're going to see Devontae Adams targets, everything just kind of go down a little bit or even just stay where it was last year, which I don't think would have made it attainable. Yeah, he had 997. He was close, but... I'm still not, I'm not buying it. I think Devontae Adams had that one good year, and that was it. And Aaron Rodgers is also declining, too. I'm talking about a guy who just doesn't throw the ball as much as he used to. It's a run-first offense. That's it. To run-first offense. Oh, first of all, they did add Devin Funches through free agency, so he will yeah, be. Yeah, but, I mean, dude, that's like maybe a couple of goal lines. I'm not even worried about Devin Funches. He's garbage. I'm just talking about it. you were saying it could adding, help my argument, but I don't really think it could. So that's why I'm not no, probably the way, not. You, but, the way but, you just put it, it would hurt your argument. But that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Had they gone out and signed Robbie Anderson or even like a Brashad Perriman or something, I'd be, I wouldn't even be worried. I, I'm absolutely, I would absolutely smash this line. My only concern is yes. Like he ha he hasn't played a full 16 game season since 2016. So that's four years with only one full 16 game season. But if you want to talk about last year, I mean, if he didn't have the high ankle sprain, he's on pace for 1,325 yards. Like, that's the player he is. There's... I'm sorry. You're probably oh. going to make this point. But you, you said Drew Brees gets that milestone mark if he plays that 16th game in 2018. Mm -hmm. If Devontae Adams plays one more game, he theoretically could get over this total. He yeah. missed four yeah. fucking games. That's so the player little, he is I'm now. I'm a little confused as to, why, as to why he went there because he was not far off and he missed four total games. That's what Go I mean. Had, had he not missed four games, had he not missed really, like, he could have missed two more games and he easily would have smashed that. So if Whoa. you want to talk about his total, his raw totals from last year, they're, they're as good as the year prior. He just wasn't on the field. That's, that's what his offense is, whether it was with McCarthy two years ago, with Matt LaFleur last year. Devontae Adams was just as much of a part of that offense as he had been, and that's the player he is now. It's not like – I mean, he's 27. He's still in the prime of his career. Yeah. Yes, Aaron Rodgers, his arm – maybe in terms of like accuracy has dipped off a little bit, but again, on the per game numbers last year, he was far and away good enough to hit this number. So I think 1149, the only concern I would have is that again, he plays 11 or 12 games. games. Like, I'm not going to, he would have to legit, legit miss, you know, four games probably to miss that again. So, um, and there's a realistic chance he could do it in 12 games. It's it, not yeah, exactly. out it's of not, the realm of possibility. It's not out of control. He had, exactly. He had a slow start to the season even before he got hurt. So, yeah, I, I still think he's as much of an elite fantasy prospect as you could find at the wide receiver position outside of Michael Thomas. There's nothing that we saw last year that tells me that he is, you know, a 1A to a 1B or that there's a new guy coming in that we should be worried about. Like, yeah, they're going to be more run heavy, but they were run heavy last year when Adams was on pace to smash this number. So I'll smash the over on this. I just think it, it makes no sense not to. Um, I am going to have to. And what I will say, do you make – Two good points. They are definitely a more run-heavy team now on the floor, and they showed success with it last year. Um, but I'm sorry. I can't see Devontae Adams going under this if he plays 
13, 14, 15 games. That four missed games last year is a huge factor. He is, like Nick said, only 27 years old. He is no bum. If they, they're definitely going to – I think they add a wide receiver in the first round. Um, yeah, but exactly. he, he's go, He's going to be – he's not – it's not going to be CeeDee Lamb. It's not going to be Jerry Judy. Um, maybe Denzel Mims. And I think that's really great because their receiving court is trash outside of Devonta Adams. It's trash. Uh, but I, I can't see him going under that total. This year, if he Rogers loves him, him too much, man. The he chemistry loves, them two have best, built up. Yeah, he may be the best route runner in football. He's still a young, twenty-seven. Look, he, he's um, only done it one time, so that's just why I just. You know, I get, I get it. It makes sense. It makes it like the the fact that he just hasn't gotten it done does yeah. make you be like. And that's you know, probably why the, where the line is is where it's at. Like yeah. he's he's more of like a. You think of Devontae Adams? Wow, thirteen touchdowns two years ago. Ten but the problem is, like, if you're going, if you're just going at numbers, like he didn't, he had the one good year. But it's like the last two years has has been what he is. You know, the, the years prior yeah. to that, he hasn't, yeah. he didn't develop to the wider like animal. If he plays fourteen games, you Where can admit he, he beats this number, right? He most gets, likely, he yeah. But I'm going with the fact most that, like you said before, but the, the 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 overs and the unders, people see the overs and they get excited. Right. This so, could be a case of that is, for sure. This I could think be a it's case a simple, of like he misses the two, three games that he normally does, and he's not going to hit it. It's what you could classify as a very fishy line because he finished like eleven hundred or ten seventy five, like hundred yards short. Yeah. I think the I think the over argument makes way too much sense. Just with everything on the surface, the games missed and the no wide receiver is there, everything in total that. Maybe it is one of those fishy lines where it's. We'll put it this way: the the public will be on the over. The public will. Oh, be Oh yeah, on the, the, over for the sure. public's me hammering the over. That's going to go up before this season starts. And just so remember if you want to get in, get who in. the sharp is. Yeah, who it's me. That's right. All right, let's go. Next one. I'm the sharp. All right, all right. Uh, He's so stoned. <laughs> next one up. We've got a battle between bagels and locks. <laughs> Le'Veon. I'm excited for this one. Le'Veon Bell. His yards from scrimmage, total yards, rushing plus receiving is set at 1359.5. So 1,359 yards. Snacks likes the under. Animal likes the over. He is trusting Adam Gase to run a somewhat efficient offense. He is trusting Le'Veon Bell to continue to operate as the workhorse in New York. And I'm excited to hear both sides of the argument here. Um, I am indifferent towards this one because I do think it's, you know, we'll let them lay the argument out and then I'll, I'll say my piece afterwards. Snacks, take it away. So I am taking the under on Love Bell's uh, yardage this year. I, I don't know where you see it in it that he's going over it with Adam Gase back at the realm with the Jets and an offensive line that was not really improved. They are hot garbage. Maybe they address that in the draft, but I also think they address running back in the draft. Um, I think Love Bell is on his last legs with the Jets. They gave him – too much money, and it's pretty much – they couldn't do anything about it this offseason, but after this season, he's, he's gone. So if they bring in a guy, they're going to want to get him work. They're going to want to get him touches. They're going to want to get him acclimated. And I, at the end of the day, I don't trust an Adam Gase offense utilizing a running back. This is not Le'Veon Bell with, with Pittsburgh three years ago. This is a complete – this is an older Lev Bell. This isn't a worse system Lev Bell. I don't see where he's going to get all these yards. And I think it's – a smart man once – said it's simple i think it's simple he goes under his total he had just over 1200 last year i see it probably around the same around the same realm of yards in that in this coming season so under love bell massive under okay hold on i'm just doing some math okay you can do math Here it didn't go. work for the first you argument might as well not do it because it's probably going to come out wrong well, it no, didn't work the first argument is. it's only 109 all right yeah so no i'm you like you said it's simple i'm just looking at Last year, 2019, 1,250 total rushing receiving yards. It's only 109 yards off of this target here. So it's a simple smash on the over for me because Darnold was out for how many games last season? So just the, the whole team play of the Jets was just out of whack. Everything was not, you know, the, the smash, season did not go huh? in, their, in their order from the, from the start. So I think you're going to have more team chemistry and – I think Gase was kind of on the fence about what he wanted to do with Lev Bell in the beginning. Like, do I want to try and trade him? Do I want to keep him? Blah, blah, blah. How am I going to use him? Should I just run him into the ground? Whatever. So I think now that he knows he's stuck with him, he's just going to run him into the ground. And 109 extra yards on top of that season. That's that game that we were talking about. He missed the one game or whatever. That's yeah, but it's game. not like he was consistently. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead that's one game. 109 total yards. That's one game. That's easy. I, I think it wasn't just, easy for him to get that every game last year. 
the 2017, the last year he played full season. Well, 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 but uh, 2017 is when he's in a 20 times better hard. system in Pittsburgh with a good offensive line. He's with Adam Gase now, and he's a year older again. Yeah, we're talking about 1,900 yards. So, like, <sighs> to come all the way down to 1,359, I think that's fair. Okay, all right. All right. I'm not a huge Lev Bell guy. I just think that this is. Too I know you're not. I know. I I, I, I don't think you said that's an easy smash. I don't see how that's an easy smash. I do. I really do. So the way I look at it, I think. Listen, he also his receptions have been down too. Maybe those receptions come back up. He had 66 at, receptions last what, year. What running back has ever thrived in Adam Gase's system? Le'Veon Bell was one of the best. Run, like you just said, 2017, he had 1,900 yards. He was one of the best running backs in football. He's a year older, and there's no running back that succeeds with Adam Gase. So I'm not banking on that or easy smashing that over this year. There's nothing that proves to the contrary why I would do that. I mean, I'm just – I know he's in a different system and everything. I'm just looking at the fact that – I hate going back to it, but, you know, 2016, he had 1,200 rushing yards alone. 2017, he had 1,200 rushing ago. yards alone. I, I get so, it. I get it. 1,300. You know, you know who also had a lot of yards in 2016? Don't mention – Matt Forte? Something. David okay. Johnson. <laughs> yeah, but what's David Johnson's line at? Maybe I'll smash that over. It's probably <laughs> – You probably – Honestly, would. I like David Johnson this year. I think he'd be a beast. Jesus no, Christ. Stop it. Stop <laughs> Please that. don't draft David Johnson. Stop. Why? All right. You guys have made your arguments? Yes. Yeah, I think, I think some good points. What's that, Animal? You said they're not good, but yeah. I think some good points were brought up. I think the fact that Sam Darnold missed a lot of time. Like those, those games where Darnold was not on the field, they were throwing out dudes that were less quarterback-like than XFL players. Like they, they were cut one of them. They were all, yeah, like right after the game. Yeah. They were awful. I've never seen a, a, a team manage that poorly where the quarterback situation dies within one second of the starter going down. So those games were horrible. But Animal makes the point that if he played the one more game, he'd have 109 yards. Not true because he hit 109 total yards one single time last year. So that was not the, the average. Do I think they add a back during the draft? Yes, I do. I think they might trade for a guy like Royce Freeman. I think they might trade for a running back. Le'Veon Bell last year had about 80% of the touches. I think where it comes to, you know, push come to shove, Animal says, you know, they're just going to ride him into the ground. But why would you ride a guy that carries the ball for 3.2 yards per carry? I can understand if it's like Derrick Henry and he was going for 5.4 yards per carry and they're like, we're going to ride him to the ground because it's his last contract year. But this is very an inefficient way of using that. And I think going back to the Pittsburgh days is irrelevant at this point because the Jets are under Adam Gase. We have the offensive line. We have So Adam Gase is inefficient. So you say, why would they do something that could be – because Adam Gase, that's why he'll fucking do it. They don't have the offensive line. That's they just pound him into the ground. So the offensive line will continue to be a problem. Bell was not good whatsoever last year. That being said, that being said, he did miss a game. He did come close, and he did play four or five games without Sam Darnold. I think which a guy that more. gets 75 to 80 targets in this offense, which is what Le'Veon Bell got, can hit this mark. It's not going to be a guy I want to draft in fantasy because I could see him getting surplanted by not, not necessarily taken off the field, but they could go to a 1A, 1B. A Snacks made the good point. They draft somebody. Bell's gone next year. They're going to want to see what they have in this young running back, no matter where they end up taking him. I could see that as a very possible situation. At the end of the day, I think last year was the absolute worst case scenario for a guy like Le'Veon Bell in this Jets offense. Doesn't mean it's going to get better, but I do think a few tweaks here and there will push him over the 1350 yard mark. So if I had to put my money down one way or another, I would probably do it on the over. Yeah. I, and you, you know, mentioned I, that they've already made improvements to the O-line. Yeah, but they say that every year, and they're always just it's, fucking it's shoddy ass. Max, they, 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 they sign like three linemen to a, to a swing, it's not like they were the best, tackle. but they're trying. They're Who did trying. they sign? Uh, McGovern, Fant, he's like the third tackle on Seattle, and they don't have yeah. a good offensive line. And, uh, it, they did not the do very well. Um, they're gonna Better have than what they had. Yeah, that's what goals. everyone said last year, too, though. They added a couple random pieces, and everyone's like, they improved their offensive line. I'm yeah, like, they, not got, when, they got – Not when you add the, the 60th best tackle. Right. They got Osmond from, from the Raiders, and he, he was gone in four weeks. I, I will say this is probably um, just based on our arguments and the way, Nick, you said it because you could really see it both ways. I think this might be one of the toughest. Lev Bell is a very tough case to call, and that's why, as we said last year, and as I'll say again this year, no thanks. Yeah, the problem – The problem with Bell is like 
The problem, yeah. The, no, when I, Bell I, is just, like, this is my last point. Yeah, if there's a running back and they're like, oh, you know, he's going to have 1,400 yards from scrimmage, you're interested in that. But the problem with Bell is yeah. like, you like his yardage way more than the scoring because his over under for touchdowns right. is probably like six or six and a yeah. half or some shit like that. So it's like, yeah, he might put up the yardage, but that doesn't really get it done in fantasy yeah. when you're not scoring a lot of points. So I'll go with the over here. And I believe we have one more left on the list. And Animal, you finally get to be the judge here. This is unbelievable. I'm ready. What do I have to fucking announce the judge part for you too? <laughs> I don't know what it is. I haven't been a judge for any of them. I just said it's the last is one. Is it not up the for judge. you though? Um, oh, yeah, I see it. All right. Christian McCaffrey rushing, receiving touchdowns set at 15 and a half. Nick is on the over and Snacks is on the under. Snacks, I love hearing you talk. Let me, let's start it off. Oh, that's so nice of you. Um, yes, Christian McCaffrey, all-world football player, all-world running back, all-world running back receiver. Um, I think it was nice to see the Panthers bring in Teddy B, and I think he's, McCaffrey's going to get a lot of those dump-offs. A lot of those touchdown passes that Teddy throws will go to Christian McCaffrey, but he had an all-world all world, – how many fucking times can you say world in one goddamn argument – all world season last year, and I think he comes down to earth a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I think, I think fifteen is the number. I think he scores fifteen touchdowns. I'm going. I'm signing off on some regression. I think he, he regresses in the touchdown total department. I think he's going to collect all these yards, and whatnot. Um, but I think Teddy's a better thrower and a better quarterback than Kyle Allen was, who he had most of the season. And I think Teddy's actually going to be able to throw the ball into the end zone to a DJ Moore and some of those other guys out there. So I am going to take the regression side of C-Mac and he's going to come down to earth a little bit and he's going to score 15 touchdowns on the dot. I'm going under on C-Mac's total touchdowns. I just think, I also think the Carolina Panthers are going to have a really bad season. So I, I just think there's going to be a lot of things that are going to go wrong there. New coach, new regime, new offense, new everything. Under 15 and a half. Okay. Um, I, I could totally see him finishing with 14 or 15 touchdowns, just straight off regression. Like you don't expect a player to score 19 That's touchdowns. Really what, what the whole? It, it feels to me a lot like the Todd Gurley situation where he scored like 22 fucking touchdowns. And next year, everyone's like, he's going to regress. And then he scores like 20 fucking two touchdowns again or something like that. I mean, C-Mac was just so fucking good last year and he's so involved in this passing game. And I love the new additions that they brought in. Like I, I know yeah. again, like getting everyone on sync, it's going to be really tough this off season, given the fact that they have a new head coach a new offensive coordinator, a new playbook, a new quarterback. Like, a lot of that stuff is going to be tough. At the end of the day, who's old reliable? It's Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, this, sure. defense, this defense is fucking trash, too. They're going to let up a lot of points, which means they're going to have to score a lot. Uh, Teddy B, I, I feel like C-Mac can probably threaten the number of receptions that he got again last year, again this year. And he showed last, he showed last season that he's got that breakaway – like those, those home run hits, you know? He's a home run hitter, for sure. Yeah, so, so when you give someone the, the type of volume, that is the other thing, I guess, that gets a little bit scary is the fact that he had over 400 touches. Most running backs coming off a season like that are not able to maintain a workload or not able to maintain that efficiency. But when you're, when you're getting a lot of them, it's not like DeMarco Murray where he had like 370 carries, right? C-Mac gets a lot of them through the air. So I'm not really worried about his health being able to stay healthy because he had a, a huge portion of them where he's not taking hits, he's running out of bounds or something like that. I'm not worried about the health, not worried about the touch count. When you have the breakaway speed like that and you get a 350 to 400 touch workload, like he'll probably, you know, those long touchdowns, I don't want to say are fluky because when you have that volume, when you have that breakaway speed, like you're going to put yourself in position to make those plays again. So I love the offense because of the, the, uh, the tempo that they're going to bring with rule and Joe Brady and Teddy B just dumping off to him. And he, he operated as a full goal line back. It's not like they got Cam Newton there sneaking the ball yeah. in from the one yard line anymore. That job is all his. My worry is yes. Do they bring in someone to be the running back with him uh, on Carolina? Maybe I'll change my mood if they bring in like an A.J. Dillon or like a thumper that's a little bit thicker, you know, to maybe take some short yardage work. But I don't know. I, I, I don't see C-Mac finishing with anything under 15 touchdowns. And I'll, 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 I'll take the slight hedge that he just goes over that number. Yeah, I, I can totally understand every single one of those points. I just worry about the system and what we were talking about before, what, what goes into it. Maybe if they start off slow like the first three weeks and he's only got a touchdown or two, you know, you got to worry about that. He's got his work cut out for him. Every, every single game you're looking, he's got fucking two touchdowns. The so first month just, of the season, if it goes off at the, at the, right, at the right time, is going to be a fucking shit show. 
Yeah, a lot, 100%. Lot of good points and that, that, made. that's what I want. Go ahead. A lot of good Go points ahead, made. Um, I, I really kind of like what Snack said about you, you kind of had me at all world with mm-hmm. that. That season last year was so it's, it's going to be so hard to replicate. And like you said, Nick, with the 400 touches and all that, like if he can get that workload again, there's no doubt in my mind that he should be able to have over 15 and a half touchdowns. But new system, new coach, new quarterback, there's too many new, too many variables for me that, like, it's just – it's going to be so hard for him to replicate that again. Not that I don't think he can because he's talented enough to do it. I just think too many things need to fall in place. There's a lot of moving parts. The, one, one thing goes wrong, and I could see yeah. it going up in, in yeah, flames. Just, this is, you know, I think their, their offensive it, line regressed too. Like, they traded away yeah. Trey Turner for, for – just the, the the culture, the locker room, like you know, everything, all that, everything changes. Teams play differently with all that stuff. So I don't I, think I also he's think be able to hit I also that. think there's like I, a I like good what chance. Snack said. I I think there's a good chance that like, uh, I mean, his receiving touchdown totals in his career five, six, four. Yeah, that like, stays the same. I I I think there's a good chance that like one of these years, the fact that he keeps catching a hundred balls, he's gonna go off for like eight or nine receiving touchdowns and possibly set the record for a running back for receiving touchdowns. You know, and I could see it being this year with all these things lining up about him being like the reliable outlet for a guy like Teddy Bridgewater. If you know the offense is not working, he's gonna continue. He's not gonna throw the ball downfield to Samuel and DJ Moore and shit like that. He's gonna be dumping it off to C Mac. So I could I could see this well, year being the year. Remember, Robbie Anderson's there now too. Another that's weapon. what I'm saying. Like if he's not feeling comfortable, he's not gonna chuck it down to Robbie Anderson. But yeah. that's that's if things don't break right. So I'm. I, I could totally see C-Mac taking this year and going for like eight or nine receiving touchdowns. Does the rushing touchdown total come down from 15? Yeah, I definitely think that probably hovers down to like nine or 10. Mm-hmm. But if he can have like an historic year through the receiving totals for touchdowns, which I don't think is out of the question, that's how I see this hitting. I, th- I, think, it's, I think it's really intriguing both ways because I, I do to your point, you know, what he did last year could be a true testament to what he does this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I just see a lot of variables coming in. You usually see regression from seasons like that, which are just absurd. You have in a, in a world where we live in now, where we don't know when they're going to get their playbooks and when they're going to practice and whatnot, that I, I think that first month is really critical, um, especially for a brand new offense, an offense that's coming from, from the SEC in college. Uh, so we will, we will have to see. I think that I, th- I really think I said it for my argument. I think that number of balls on like 15. I really yeah. do. I think, you know, he's not going to have like nine touchdowns. That's not, that's not the regression I'm talking about. I think it's going to be 13, 14, 15, like right there. I think it's going to be tight. Fair. Yeah. And Alvin Kamara is the one on one. Fuck yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, would, I wouldn't go that far. I, nope. I, I, don't, I don't think I would do that. Regression. 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 You think Alvin Kamara is going to regress, regress gonna, a little bit more? He's going to keep regressing. And he's going to keep regressing. Gonna regress, and then Kamara is going to progress. What about Saquon? What do you think Saquon is going to do? Possible 101 candidate. Uh, I'm with you. Possible 101 candidate? Really, uh, uh, really going he's out on a limb there, animal. Yeah, listen. I got to tell it how it is. Straight up. No wait, wait, hold on. Time out. Is it, is it out of a, going out on a limb if it's anybody but C-Mac at 101? Uh, I feel like it kind of is. He's the consensus. I don't. I don't think I've seen anywhere where. No, no, no. You're put, right. You're right. But Barkley the way he, or even the way Hooker he phrased or, it was like, Saquon Barkley could be a possible 101. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, of course, just, okay. he, of course, he could be. Yeah, he might be a good running back this yes. year in fantasy. But I, I will, I will say, I think it does does bring up a good a good question and good analysis. Like, is it that you uh, call? I mean, would it shock a, anybody if Saquon show? ends up as the RB one? No. no, I don't. I don't think there's enough like, juice and there's here's, enough. Here's the scenario. In from here's last the year scenario. For, for him to do it. Fantasy football draft 101. Guy's about to draft. He goes up to the board. He opens his shirt and he's got underneath it another shirt that says Saquon Barkley. How Ooh. crazy would that be? There you go. He's not a top five running back anymore. No, he's just going to get hurt. And <laughs> now he hits the under on every fucking prop bet that's in the world. Like, is it, is it bizarre? <laughs> You need to do that again for whoever your first round pick is to see if it's an actual mush thing or not. Oh my God. You have to do we, it every year. We need to put it to the test. That I'd rather not thing. test it just in case it's true. No, because then we know then we, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. then we know who to tell people not to take and we'll be the we best in the, to do it. We'll we'll be the best in the world. Picks every year. No, thank you. We'll just be really good with either second, third, and fourth. I usually am. I mean, that's how I made two. Yeah, it was, was very good. Was so, uh, so it's settled. So you'll do it again this year. 
All right, all right, all right. Thank you, everybody, for listening and watching again. As always, we hope you are staying safe, and we hope that we are providing you some sort of normalcy and some entertainment to uh, accompany you um, with nobody because you shouldn't be with anybody in your house. So I hope you're watching this with nobody. I hope you you're lived with your mom. With I, hope you, I hope you kicked her out by now. Kick your mom out. She's old. I don't want her getting the virus. We don't want anybody getting the virus. Please stay safe. Subscribe, like, thumbs oh, up button. Also, comment below. Also, Fuck if, me, hey, Max. if you felt like you got some value at all and you're looking for some more value, you should buy yourself a draft guide. Head over to Big Dogs Fantasy. Was it slash MKF, Nick? What is it? You just sent them to to get a different company's draft guide. <laughs> BigDogsDraftGuide.com <laughs> forward slash MKF. You can get the season long and the rookie dynasty for 10 mother freaking dollars. It'll keep you occupied for at least like 32% of the quarantine. It helps. It helps. Every bit yeah. helps. Plus, you're, you're keeping our business in uh, alive. If you well, like our content, you need to keep us alive. By the way. Now that we're in quarantine and on lockdown, am I going crazy? But I feel like this is – if you're not into Dynasty, this is the perfect time to do it. Yeah, you got yeah. nothing but time to start researching and how the Dynasty yeah. League works and these players that you want to do. Get your friends that are in your league. It wants to see if they want to do it or find some other guys. Try and get 10, 12 guys. Start a Dynasty League. Perfect time to do it. Yeah, so, perfect time for a startup draft. I, I'm, I tweeted it out before. I'm, I'm getting a startup going soon. I don't know what I'm going to be doing with it. But uh, if I do end up doing audience members out there, big dogs, fans and shit, I will let you guys know. Make sure you're following us on Twitter because that's where we'll keep y'all updated. I believe our uh, Zendaya poll should be done by now, no? Uh, you know what? I, I don't want to talk about I this. I haven't even looked at that one. Herd of goats. So much wrong with this. There's supposed to be no females. And then you put Zendaya in, who's already like a big part of the brand. Hold on, Max. Then, Max look how energized then, High Max gets right now. And then, this is the yeah, most energized he loses, he's been all he loses, fucking episodes. Because yeah. I'm, this is bullshit. Well, Max, you lost the block, not to Zendaya. We didn't even get to do the video. We were supposed to do a video of it so we could all explain our picks and then Nick Yeah, shut wait, down the what video. are you complaining about? You didn't even lose the, down Zendaya, the video you <laughs> because he knew. I lost Zendaya and I couldn't care. I would pick Zendaya over Gronk. Yeah. All right. Probably. Listen, Max, it's simple, okay? It happens, all right? Get fucking when you're the bodied. Ball, when you're the boss, it's you get fraud. This is fraud. This is. I made one rule. I said if 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 you have a wife, you're allowed to use her in it, and you guys are not married. I am. Bullshit. I'm not married. No, I'm not. You're not. Married. You. One chain's not married. So make sure you're following us on Twitter because that's where all these fucking bullshit polls are going on. We love you. Bro. Thank you for watching this long. Uh, well, you. I'm just using your guys' words. I'm the fucking champion over here. We I'm love fucking, you. Scott, hit the outro. Bye. <laughs>